Very good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining. Sorry for that delay. We had some uh, connect problems actually with setting up the uh, the webinar, and uh, therefore a bit of conflicting times there. So that's why. Alrighty. So with that said, let's take a look at trading strategies with Ichimoku. First of all, let me quickly check if my sound is working as uh, as it should be, and if you hear me properly. If you could write a quick wire, yes, that'd be perfect. All right, so with that said, let's move over and take a look at Ichimoku. But first, uh, be aware that this webinar is intended for a global audience, but may not be suitable for everyone. Please take a look at adamarcusglobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact an appropriate entity to find out more information about whether it's suitable for you and other conditions and details. Also, trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only, and by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer, plus you're aware of the risk involved when trading. Alrighty. So, thank you for your attention on that. Uh, be aware that the Admiral Markets has launched a uh, new feature, which I think is very cool, WebTrader, which means you, you don't have to open any software. You just go to your browser, and you can uh, just look at uh, the charts you can look at the forex market you can look at the other instruments and you can see basically the graphs and do the trading on that which gives you a lot of flexibility um, for instance if you're maybe abroad or traveling or with friends or business partners or wherever or even at home you can use it so it's very flexible you can also of course choose the mt4 software and then adam markets have a, has a supreme edition a variation that uh, might be suitable for you uh, and has a lot of extra features. All right. So, and the Supreme Edition looks like this, by the way. Today, we're going to take a look at what is, first of all, the Ichimoku. And then I'm going to dive into some, let's say, maybe more basics, uh, if you don't mind. And uh, for those that have more experience in it, bear with me uh, for the first part, the first 30 minutes. And then Nenna's going to take over and he's going to talk also in more detail about strategies. So what is the Ichimoku indicator, first of all? Well, basically, um, you can find it, first of all, on the MT4 platform, all right? You can click on Insert, go to Indicators, click on Trend, and then you'll find Ichimoku Kinko uh, Hayo, I think. Well, forgive my, uh, my pronunciation or uh, accent if I don't uh, pronounce it correctly. I probably don't. But that's how you can find it. Uh, so it's on every standard MT4 platform, you will find this uh, indicator. Where is it from? Well, it uh, basically dates back to uh, the 1930s, but was only released in the 1960s, I think 1969. Uh, after years and years of studies, decades in fact, 30 years, uh, the uh, inventor uh, was uh, basically working on this, a journalist. And uh, yeah, he worked hard on this for the Japanese stock market and uh, thought this was very useful and then I think wrote a book about it. So what does the Ichimoku do? It shows a lot of things. In fact, it's very useful. It's very multifunctional because it, it shows the trend. It shows momentum. It, just show, it shows basically support and resistance and it also has trading signals. So it's a quite a all round package, right? When I use fibs and trend lines and moving averages, I'm using three things for different elements, whereas the Ichimoku, although it looks quite crowded on the chart, there are a lot of things that are on the chart. It's it's a one package. You just have to put one indicator, and boom. You have kind of an all-around uh, approach to trading. So that's an advantage. The disadvantage is going to be that it's difficult to add anything else because it, it looks quite busy. Right. If, the, if you look at the chart, it's just like pretty crowded already. So if you want to add a trend line or add a fib, it's getting quite messy quickly. So that's the disadvantage. This is how it looks like. And you can see indeed how, how busy it looks like already. So if you want to add something, it's maybe not as pleasant. Uh, the awesome oscillator has nothing to do with it, by the way. I just forgot to remove it. The fractals have nothing to do with it either. It's just that uh, when I was making it, it's my natural template and I added it and didn't think about removing it. But uh, the Ichimoku, of course, has six things, and we'll talk about those um, as we go along in this webinar. But you can see that I, I used to actually um, 
use it very frequently. To be honest, I use it less and less now because just the fact that I rather use moving averages and, and other uh, trend lines and fibs and it just becomes a bit crowded. But I, from my perspective, did have a reasonable experience with it uh, a few years ago, using it quite frequently. So I'm going to tap into that uh, experience and knowledge. All right. So what are the parts, basically? First of all, Ichimoku apparently means instant look at a balanced chart. And it's, it's different than moving averages because it uses high-low and, and the average of that instead of using the close. Although the moving average, you can use high-low as well, but not uh, typical and average as well, but okay, typically you use the close. Um, so thank you. All right, there are six things on the chart here. Let me go back. Or anyhow, well, let me um, first explain what they are. Tenkin Sen, there are two faster kind of moving lines. That's the Tenkin and the Kiyun. And what they do is look at the highest high and the lowest low. Once again, highest high and lowest low. All the other values do not matter. They look at nine periods and 26 periods. So one is longer term, one is shorter term. So out of nine candles, they look at what candle is the highest, has the highest high of those nine, and which candle has the lowest low of those nine. And then the Kiyun does the same, but for 26 candles. They take the highest high and the lowest low and divide it by two. We'll show you on the chart in just a second. Then you have the Senko span A, which is part of the Kumo cloud, and it takes the Tenkin and the Kiyun and divides by two and looks at 26 periods. There's the B version, which does the same, but looks at the longer term, 52 periods. They have the Kubo cloud, which is basically C and D, the Senko span A and B. And you have something called the Chico span, which basically looks at today's close, but plotted in the past. On a chart, which is a bit more easier, I think, to comprehend, it looks like this. For those that have seen and used this indicator, this is probably known. For those that have never ever looked at it, this explains what those lines are. The red one, when using it on annual markets at least, sometimes that could be the other way around, is the Tenkin. That's the faster moving average in a way. Let's say, let's call it the moving average. It's not, it's, it's different obviously, but it has kind of that role. The Kiyun is, is the slower one here, all right? So as you can see, the Tenkin kind of a, goes along with price a bit faster than the Q. The Tenko span, which is the average of the Tenkin and the Q, and remember, but plotted on different time frames, to, to, I mean different periods, is, is actually also the Kumo cloud. So the filling in between those two, the, the, in between A and B, is, is what's the cloud. And the cloud goes thicker and narrower and, and changes direction as well bearish to bullish, bullish to bearish, depending on if the faster is below the uh, below or above the slower. If the faster is below, we're in a downtrend. If the faster is above the slower, we're in an uptrend. This is uptrend. This part, I don't know if you see my cursor. Let me check. I can't really see it. I'm using a different PC than normal. But uh, this is this is the bearish one here in the middle. And at the later part here as well, where, all right, so price is still going through it. This is the euro dollar, by the way. Then the green line is the Chico span, which is that the close plot of 26 back. Now, the Chico span, basically, it's interesting to see the relationship of Chico span compared to price at that point. If the Chico is below it, uh, basically, there's no... Um, support remaining, but there's resistance. And if, price, if Chico, the green one, is above price, that means that uh, there's no resistance, right, at this moment. So, for instance, at this moment, current price, you see the Chico is above price. So there's not much uh, resistance. Whereas if there were price right above it, there would be more resistance. Alrighty. Let's talk a bit more about theory before we dive into more practical things. Uh, there are three components of Ichimoku. 
time theory, uh, and, and that's something I haven't used, so I'm not the best one to explain it, I'll be honest from the very uh, beginning. Um, it's apparently using some numerical values and applying it to the past, uh, but uh, this is something that I don't have any practical experience with. Uh, I do use time elements in my own trading, but in a different way. Uh, Ichimoku's wave movement theory is, is something pretty close to Elliott Wave, but simplified. And I like it because it's basically saying, okay, let's forget all that in complicated wave counting. Well, I wouldn't say personally complicated, but some might think it's complicated. It's definitely difficult to, of course, use it um, as a standalone tool, and I don't recommend that, by the way. But it's good as a supportive tool. In any, any case, that's Elliott Wave. What Ichimoku wave mo movement theory does is it says, okay, there's only impulsive and there's corrective price. Down here is impulsive, up here is corrective. And that's what I say often with Edit Wave 2 is labeling is great, but don't do it right away. First, just look at impulse and correction. Make it simple. Just look at impulse correction, impulse correction, correction, impulse, and try to understand that. And that's what Ichimoku also says. Don't go into complicated la labeling. Just try to understand the flow uh, the market structure by looking in, looking at impulse and, and correction. That's basically at least how I interpret the Ichimoku wave mo movement theory, simplified. And this is what I also recommend when traders are looking at the yellow wave is to start this way. The third thing is price theory, which basically it takes different lengths of move and uses the targets. This one used the entire swing and adds it to the top. Uh, this one uses the entire swing but adds it to the bottom, so the target is lower. The right lower corner uh, basically uses the difference between the bottoms, I think, and adds it to the to this, the second bottom. And the right upper corner, uh, let's see, uses the correction and adds it to the top. So different ways of calculating targets here with Ichimoku, um, basically using swings the movements, pips, pip values, basically. You know, the top and bottom difference between the top and the bottom is 100 pips. So I add those 100 pips to the top or to the bottom, or the correction is 40 pips, so I'll add that 40 pips to the top. That's basically what, uh, what the target, the price theory is. Let's, take, let's dive a bit more into detail about the Tenkin and Kiyun. The Tenkin is red, it's the faster responsive one, the blue is the slower one, and if the red is above the blue, we're in a bullish momentum. If the red is very simple, is below the blue, we're in a bearish momentum. If the red and the blue have an angle, there's more momentum. And if the red and the blue are flat, well, there's no momentum or less momentum. And they can be flat, totally flat, flat as flat can be. That doesn't happen with moving averages. They can look flat, but often they still have a bit of angle. And the reason is because uh, the, Ichimoku, the Tenkin and Kiyun can be totally flat because you're looking at the last 9 and 26 periods for the higher high and the lower low. Nothing else matters. So what can happen is that out of those 9 or 26 candles, the next period could have the same higher high and the same lower low, meaning the exact same value. And therefore, if the Kiyun or Tenkin has the same value, the level is going to just go sideways. Very simple. So that is understanding the momentum. So here, the red was falling like crazy. The blue was falling crazy. The red was below the blue. Very simple. It's a bearish impulse. Kumu Cloud. All right. Let's talk about a bit about that. An uptrend would mean that price is above the cloud. Or the span A is above the span B. Here on the left, you can see periods when it was a bit darker red when price was actually um, in an uptrend, right? Price was above the Kumo cloud, the Kumo cloud was bullish, all right? Then later on, price fell below the cloud and the cloud turned bearish because it turned purple here, you can see, and the A was below the B. It's just like moving averages, right? When the 8 EMA is above the 21 or the 100 EMA and price is above the 8, everything is aligned. Price is above the fast-moving average. The fast-moving average is above the slow-moving average. So everything is aligned to the upside. It's an uptrend. Same is true, holds true for, the, for price in relationship to the Kumo cloud. 
is priced above or below it, and how does the cumul cloud look like, bearish or bullish? When the span, one of the cumul cloud, part of that cumul cloud has an angle, that's an extra confirmation that there's a there's a trend going on. Or when it's flat, right, then it shows a pause of, of that trend. So when you look at trading uh, signal types, basically what happens is you could have Tenkin and Kiun crosses. So when the red goes below the blue, that could be a signal for a short. All right. Or when the red crosses above the blue, that could be a signal for a long. That's one type of trades. Then you get price breaking through the Kumo on hourly, four hour, daily. Uh, for instance, here, this Kumo break, right? That could be a trade to the downside. Here, the price breaks above the Kumo. That could be a trade to the upside. All right, this, I think those are the only trades here. Here, there was a break to the downside. That didn't go all too far. So there are three trades, one that didn't work, two that were looking good. Right? Uh, perhaps uh, here, again, we break below it, but we didn't really go through the Kumo. We just went into it and then fell again. So I'm not, I wouldn't consider that maybe a very strong signal. The best signals are often when, the, when price has stayed on the other side of the Kumo for a decent amount of time. So uh, basically, here price stayed above the Kumo for a lengthy period of time, didn't touch the Kumo for 50 candles or so before it broke below it. Those signals tend to be a bit better. So what, what number do you want to look at? Well, probably anywhere like more than five or 10 candles not touching the, the, the Kumo and pulling it away from it, and then breaking back into the opposite direction would be, I think, uh, better. So from that point of view, this long here would have been filtered out because there's only a few candles below it, from that perspective, if you use that kind of rule at least. All right. Uh, and then what other types of trade signals do you have? You got price breaking the Kumo, uh, the Tenkin and, and Q. So that could be, for instance, when price is above the Tenkin and Q and it goes back below it. And in this case, right here. So let's talk a bit more about crosses, the Tenkin and the Q and crossing each other. When the Tenkin cross occurs below the, I mean, when you have a bullish signal, but it happens below the Kumo, it's a weak cross. What basically then happens is that price is below the Kumo, which means we're in a downtrend, but the Tenkin uh, is becoming impulsive. The, basically, what's happening is uh, we're getting it, we're, we're in a downtrend, but we're getting a bullish cross. So you can imagine, right? That's not exactly the most uh, perfect situation. Could be retracement, could be a reversal, maybe, but it's not in the most bullish position. So it's a weak crossover, that's why. When a bullish signal occurs in the Kumo, it's a medium one. And when a bullish signal occurs above the Kumo, that's a strong crossover. With the bearish, it's the opposite. And we have the image for that. Here we have a crossover on the left, right? Where price basically, uh, somewhere in here, sorry, where the red goes below the blue, but it happens above the Kumo. This time it worked out fine. That's a weak signal officially. All right. Here, later on, we get a cross of red below the blue again. That happens below the Kumo. That's a strong signal because it happens. We got a bearish signal in a bearish trend. All right. So uh, let me show you on the live charts now a bit more. I wanted to talk a bit more about. Sorry about that about uh, these three trade signal types. And then Nenet will also dive into more details about the strategies that he would like to discuss. And if you have any questions for any of us, of course, please let me know. But basically, uh, these are roughly the three types. Maybe there are other types that I didn't uh, think about. But as far as I know, these are the most common kind of strategies that are based on. 
And then, of course, it depends on the strategy rules and the details. But most of the time, you'll see kind of these types of, of strategies and, and trade signals uh, occurring. All right. So let me open my charts. Uh, once again, I'm on a, on a different PC uh, than usual. So I need to open it. And just give me a second for, uh, for me to load that chart. Shouldn't take too long. And I'm going to show you, I think, uh, the pound yen. Pound yen definitely moving down a lot, obviously, as we saw. And I'm going to insert the Ichimoku now. You'll be able to see it. You should be able to see the charts right now. I'm going to add it. Actually, you can see where you do it. Insert indicators. Go to trend. And then click on Ichimoku. You can change the parameters if you want and the visualization. And this is how it looks like. And let's take a look at the four hour chart. I think four hour chart is a good chart for any strategies on Ichimoku, sometimes one. But I think four hour daily, obviously for the end, it's good. But in general, all currency pairs, I think, do work pretty good. So let's dive into a bit of uh, examples here. You can see that the Tenkin stayed all the way below the Kiyun. And uh, basically, when we had the cross here, right? This was the cross right here of the red going below the blue. That could have been the strong crossover signal to take a short with the stop loss above the top. Now, because it's a four-hour chart, you're looking at almost a 200 pip stop loss. Because it's a swing trade, it's a four-hour chart, obviously. And uh, there are multiple ways of, of, of trading it. It could be a target. But, the, you know, as I said, price theory says use this top and bottom and then add it, for instance, to the bottom. So... The top and bottom here is, is 280 pips, so you can add 280 pips to this bottom, which would be roughly here, I think. That could be one way of putting a stop loss in TP. Yeah, indeed. That's about one to one. That could have been one way of trading it. Uh, or part take profit and just using a trail stop and using uh, basically uh, a candle. Uh, yeah, it could be, for instance, uh, a fractal that is hovering atop, hovering around this Kiyun, for instance. The Kiyun, you can see, doing very well to protect the price. It's difficult probably to hang in for the entire ride, but if a trader manages, and sometimes uh, it does work out because the swing trades can be very long when using the uh, Ichimoku. If you're able to survive these pullbacks here, these couple of pullbacks at the beginning, that it could really turn into a very big swing trade because this has fallen almost more than a thousand pips, 1300 pips. And I'm not saying it's easy, it's difficult. It's very difficult. It's a long trade. But if you like swing trades, it's, Ichimoku is good because it does give sometimes these long, these crossovers that really go far and far and far and far. So if you're lucky enough to have the patience to stay in it, it is possible with Ichimoku. You can really get big wins sometimes. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you always should stay in that long because sometimes they go just for short rides. So sometimes mixing up, looking at the bigger picture, looking at the daily chart and seeing, do you expect that move or not? Looking, or maybe even splitting the TP, splitting the part into two parts, like taking a bit of TP uh, at a fixed part and the other part maybe leaving it on and using a trading stop for that. That could be a solution. Let's take a look at other examples here. This crossover, that was, that was a strong crossover, right? Uh, there's another one here. This is a strong crossover too. Didn't go anywhere. Probably would be a loss, right? One loss, one win. If you take that immediate entry here, crossover here. That's a weak one, but did go for a decent, decent ride. Right? Here too. One way for take profit would be once again to use the swing and add it to the bottom or to this top. Looks like the target was hit, but we can check. It's very this close though. 230. No, it was missed. But here it was hit, so it depends how long you want to stay in that trade. Here's a, a bullish crossover right here. Did go a bit. And you see using the Tenkin or the Kiyun is is a good way to trail stop as well. Uh, this one we Got a crossover, but it was a bullish candle. And that's something you might want to be careful of when the candles are strong in the opposite direction, especially if the price is then above the Kubo, right? Alrighty, so 
those could be some thinking crosses. I uh, would say that you know you want to maybe have some supportive material here uh, to 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 filter out maybe some bad setups, like looking at candle closes, looking at uh, what type of candle uh, the break the 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 cross happens. Kubo cloud break. You can see here a bunch of candles above it, and here going below it. You know, with the stop loss, I mean, I typically would go above the other side of the Kumo. I don't know, 15, 25 pips, something like that. So in this case, uh, you know, prices here, that's the breakout. Go a bit below it, two, maybe 20 pips below it, 15. Depends on the time frame, too. And uh, something like that could be the stop loss. This is why it's stop losses, because we're looking at the four-hour chart. Don't Don't get me wrong here. Right, it's not so strange. That could be a breakout of the Kumo cloud, for instance. Right, um, and it's important to look at the thickness of the cloud because the thicker, really, the more stronger the trend is as well. All right, so those are uh, potential breakouts uh, when looking at. Uh, at the Kumo cloud right here, you got some that just don't go anywhere, like this one, right? That would be a loss probably. And uh, not sure if that one is a desirable one to trade necessarily because of a very uh, shallow and thin Kumo, right? So that could be one thing to, to think about about skipping this one. There is no support here or resistance. So that could be a good one not to trade. Could have been good to filter out maybe this break to the downside here. I hope you can see my cursor. Um, and the other type was, let me check. Oh, price breaking it. Okay. Well, basically, you can use it, of course, as a different way, method too. You can use it as a trend. You can use Tenkin and Kiyun on a daily, for instance, uh, to say, okay, you know, when price is breaking below the Tenkin, like here, for instance, right, uh, to the downside, or here to the upside on the daily, then when I'm interested in trading it to that direction, but I will zoom in to a lower time frame. You can use it as kind of like a filter for that. Right here, we got price below the Tenkin. So from that moment, we'll zoom into the four-hour chart. And say, okay, if price makes a cross, I'm interested. Or if price, you know, you could be, you could use it as a the tenkin and the key, and you can use as a one time frame as as a requirement, and then zoom into lower time frames to hunt for uh, for actual setups. For instance, there are a lot of ways, of course, we can we can connect and combine them. And I think that Nana will dive into that uh, a bit more. I don't want to say too much about strategies uh, because uh, Nana has that all prepared. So I think. It's probably better if, if, if Neda then continues with today's presentation and he'll dive into uh, more strategy uh, examples and, and all the good stuff. All right, so let me see uh, if I can pass it over to, to Neda. Let me find the change presenter button here. Not sure if Neda... Can you hear me at this moment? Yes, I can Either. hear you. Thank you, Chris, great. for a great introduction. Now let's continue. Chris has explained about uh, Ichimoku. Now I will explain about the actual strategy, okay? So uh, before we begin, we need to explain what is Ichimoku indicator. Then we will go with Heiken Eshi, and I will show you Heiken Eshi tra uh, Ichimoku trading system. And uh, this trading system was uh, Firstly, tested on Forex Factory like uh, six, seven years ago, and I have modified a bit to and uh, opted for uh, additional uh, price uh, goes uh, uh, within the strategy itself. So I will show you. So first, what is Ichimoku indicator? As Chris has explained, we have some lines there, we have crosses, and basically. The most important part, you don't need to remember all those things because probably the language is not very native to English and it's a bit, uh, it's a bit awkward to, to 
pronounce these things, but let's say that we have a Senku span, Kijun san, and we we will refer to this as cloud. Uh, Japanese say for a cloud Kumo, so Kumo is the cloud, and these uh, two lines are basically uh, I call it blue and red lines, which det determine the trend. So we will refer to it as blue and red lines, and uh, this uh, Chiku span is actually a trend line. So we have a cloud, we have blue line, red line, and a trend line. Okay, and notice that uh, trend line always goes below the price if the price is in downtrend. So it's uh, a bit different than from standard uh, price action analysis. So once more, cloud, blue, red line, and trend line. Okay, so this is for just for Ichimoku. Now. Uh, the difference pro from uh, traditional candlesticks and Heikenashi, I will get right to the chase. I will cut it to the chase because we need to we need to cover the trading system. So we will not talk a bit more about theory. So I will be fast with this. Uh, the difference between Heikenashi and uh, traditional candlesticks is the open price, close price, highs, and low price. That is the most important part of difference from traditional candlesticks. By using different algorithms to calculate the open, close, high, and low price, Heiken Eshi will give us direction, trend strength, and a possibility to ride the trend. So these are the most important facts about Heiken Eshi. The first benefit is the direction. Color-coded candles give us the direction of Heiken Eshi. Trend strength also give us an important indication that those color colors which, which are shown by Heikenashi can give us the actual cue. Heikenashi candles usually have a no wick. If you see a wick, that means that basically Heikenashi continues to show the trend moving in your favor, but it has a wick that means that you're in a strong trend. So no week is a strong trend. Week is a bit of trend, but not that, that strong. It's a different than price action, so you will see that in the next slide. And riding the trend. Candles can sometimes stay one color for a long period of time. And that is actually a good thing, especially if you trade on four-hour chart catching and holding onto these long trends can very often be profitable. And that is a good thing because with Heiken Eshi and Ichimoku combination, here with this system you go with higher time frames. Next time when we talk about Heiken Eshi and Ichimoku, we will give you a breakout strategy. This is now a trend strategy. Heiken Eshi and Ichimoku combined. Remember these things for, for Heiken Eshi. When prices are trending up, Heiken Eshi bars have no lower shadow. This is important for you to remember. It, and it, it's not just for Heiken Eshi and Ichimoku combination, but for the overall Heiken Eshi explanation. So when prices are trending up, Heiken Eshi bars have no lower shadow. When prices are trending down, Heiken Eshi bars have no upper shadow. Doji like bars with both lower and upper shadows are possible turning points. And the doji bars also appear in price congestion. Okay, so this is about Haken Ashi. And I, I will show you now Haken Ashi chart. Let me bring it up. Okay, here. This is Haken Ashi. And you can see it very clearly. Now, don't be focused on cloud, blue and red line, and trend line. Be focused on uh, actual Heiken Eshi candles. So when the price is showing wicks like this and Heiken Eshi candles like this, this means that the trend is strong, especially if you see no wick. But even with these kind of wicks here, you see that the trend is strong. This indicates a retracement within a trend. So when price is retracing, it will have usually in, up, in downtrend, retracement is Blue Heiken Eshi candles with upper wicks. Okay? So you can see it here. Strong downtrend. 
small retracement, downtrend retracement. When we have uptrend, Heike Nashi candle should be blue and have upper wick. Okay? So it's very, very easy to spot a good trend with Heike Nashi. You know that both me and Chris are uh, basically are, are teaching Heike Nashi and we are fans of Heike Nashi. So uh, this principle, uh, Heike Nashi Nichimoku, is widely known to be potentially very, very successful. I personally uh, have seen that this kind of systems have the power in itself, but of course, as with every system, you need to test it. So definitely, it's worth trying if you want to trade Ichimoku, because as you know, Ichimoku is, is it's not a price action, it's not a harmonic, it's, it's a sort of price action, but definitely uh, a dimension for itself. Now, basic principles of uh, Ichimoku now, okay? As I said, you don't need to learn these terms, so I will go again through chart. When you see that the price is below cloud, below the cloud, and by default you see the cloud is gray here, and you see that blue is above red, and you see that this trend line, we will call it trend line, is going below the price, you know that the trend is to the downside. And this is how Ichimoku looks by default. Okay, This is the default look of Ichimoku. If you right click on indicators list and go to Ichimoku, you can change the colors. Obviously, uh, up Kumo or up cloud is Sandy Brown, down uh, trend is Thistle. We will change this. So down trend will be shown by red, and up trend, of course, will be shown by blue. Okay, like this, and you can see it now. Now it's red cloud, prices are below red cloud, and this is the most important fact, guys, of Ichimoku. When prices are below the cloud, we say that the trend is to the downside. When prices are above the cloud, we say that the trend is to the upside. Okay? It's very important for you to distinguish it. Now, obviously, when the when the price is downtrending, you can see that uh, this trend line here, or uh, how uh, Japanese are calling it Chiku Span here, it, it needs to go below the price. When price or when, when market is trending up, this Chiku Span trend line has to be above the price. Okay? So it's pretty much very clear how to use it. Even when you open four hour time frame, you, you will see even better picture. Because when you combine Heiken Eshi with Ichimoku, you can see that there is no much noise. You see how uh, the charts look smooth. They're pretty much smooth, you see? Because it's it's of Heiken Eshi. So the combination of Heiken Eshi and uh, Ichimoku on higher time frames produces good results. So definitely you should try to, to stick, uh, if, you, if you want to stick to Ichimoku, try to stick it with both Heiken Eshi and Ichimoku. Okay? Now, let's see the, the strategy itself. Indicators which we use are Ichimoku Kinki Hyo, or simply said Ichimoku indicator. You have it on your MT4. Heiken Eshi, and multi-time frame indicator known as Ichi 360 monitor. This indicator has been taken from Forex Factory. It's free, of course, and uh, it's the part of this system. Now, how to define which pairs to trade? Now, this is the first thing, and the first step is the trend definition. So once this is, you can snapshot it. This is for you. So once each day or every four hours, if you prefer, if you prefer check the Ichi 360 monitor. So this is a step that must be performed before a currency pair can be considered for trading. Okay, now, the Ichi 360 monitor must be 80% positive, 13 or more up arrows, or 80% negative, 13 or more down arrows, for a currency pair to be added to the list 
for trade. Okay? So you just open your Ichimoku chart. It doesn't matter. You need to have the monitor on it. If you don't have a monitor, you can email me and I will send you. Of course, it's free. So this is Ichimoku monitor and you just need to count e either blue or red arrows. So let's count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, okay. More than 13. So dollar yen is in downtrend. If you remember the analysis which I did with standard price action analysis, which I always do, you know that uh, basically dollar yen is indeed in downtrend. Now here you can see also confirmation from Ichimoku. Now the, the, the next step is how we take the entries with this system. So for long positions, price candle must completely clear top of the cloud and close above the cloud. Okay? So you should definitely see close above the cloud. Okay? Now this is much easier for you. For downtrend, prices need to be below the cloud. Okay? So prices need to be below the cloud. So you can take the trades either on four hour chart or one hour chart. Usually how the system handles the trade is the trade entry is blue red cross. So when blue cross is below red as it's shown it here okay here this is a short signal. Of course candle need to be entry need to be confirmed by a red Haken Ashi candle. So this could have been a trade entry here, okay? So prices needs to be below the cloud. This trend line or Chiku span should be below the, the price and Heike Neshi should be red. So this cross is actually an entry. Now because this blue-red cross is tend to happen every so often, it's it's also good to know guys that you can place as always a Fibonacci indicator so like this insert Fibonacci retracement you go from most obvious swing points so let's say that this was swing low this was swing high and here you can see that basically the price hit very close to, it was very close to 50 and the first candle here was actually continuation signal. Okay, so here we had an entry here, then another entry was spotted here. This is what I have added to system because sometimes you will not see these crosses every so often. Now another component which I can say it's good to change is the rule that trend line should be always below the price. What I see is, especially if you go with higher time frames, the, uh, this Chiku Span uh, trend line should not always be below the price. It's good and it, it shows that the trend is really strong. But as seen here, the price has made a lot of pips before actually this line went down below the price. So when the price is below, the line, it, it shows that the trend is very, very strong. And it's okay. The trend is strong. But when you see like this, it can mean that there is a retracement. So when you see that the price has gone above the line, you can, you can say it's retracement and put another Fibonacci. So always go with previous swing high and low for Fibonacci or low high, depending on your trend. Okay, here you can see high, low. Now we are using Heiken Ashi candles, not standard candlesticks. So some, it, it, can, it can be different to standard candlestick, guys. So don't be confused. It's, it's a bit different, okay, than from standard candlesticks, okay? So here you can see basically that the price has rejected here, has been rejected here, and it made another swing before going up again. To actually filter a good, or how can I say, to cherry pick the entry, you can also try to actually go to one hour time frame and watch the actual one hour candle 
rejecting. So let's use the previous example. Four-hour retracement has finished here. Okay. Immediately, when you see that the price has started to go down, you go to one-hour chart, and you actually can you can see here it's easier to combine. We also don't forget that we talked about multiple time frame analysis. So it's actually very easy to combine multiple time frame approach within Kekinashi. So actually we add some flavor to this system. As I said, this is not my creation. I just added a few indicators to actually uh, pinpoint a better trade opportunities. And this can be a very solid experience for all of you if you're not sure how to trade Ichimoku. Okay? So once more, I will show you how to go with a trend here. Let's say that you want to trade, well, what can we say? Let's say a strong trend and maybe dollar cad, yes. Okay, dollar cad. Well, let's see the past. We probably will, we could have, uh, we could have uh, counted like 13 candles yesterday or a day before. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Even today, 13 arrows. So it's, it's okay. And definitely, you see, the price is still bullish. It's above the cloud, so it's still bullish. Okay. So let's say how we could have made an entry up. Okay. We can open a four-hour chart here. And let's use this example, most recent example. So here the price was going up. And you can see here that the retracement has started. Okay. As with all Fibonacci, from left to right, from bottom to top in uptrend. So the price has touched. 50, you see here, 50. And immediately, when price started to rise, you can assume that retracement could be over. So what you do is you zoom into one hour chart. So we will mark this candle here. Okay, mark this candle here. Blue candle, okay, but the price has started to go up. Now it's rejection from 50. There is a confluence here. You can see that red is above blue. Okay, so still uptrend here, 13, probably even more candles back then, and one hour chart. So, see here, next blue candle is actually your confirmation for entry. Okay, here, see? So that is how, those are the ideas how you can combine Ichimoku and Heike Neshi. So it looks pretty much powerful when you see a big trend. And of course, you should avoid situations as this one. Because Ichimoku clearly states when the price is in the cloud and when lines are intertwined, you don't enter any trades. So these are conditions to avoid. Very clear in the decisive market here. So you don't trade it. Only trade when the trend is strong. And this is the basic rule of Ichimoku. You go with trend trades. You don't go with counter trend trades. Okay? So guys, this is how this system works. Of course, uh, all these indicators except for Heiken Ashi and Ichi 360 monitor can be found by default on MT4. So if you need any of those indicators, don't hesitate to ask me for it. I will gladly give you the indicators and I will gladly share this with you. If anything is not clear about this strategy, feel free to ask us. Of course, there are a lot of uh, different approaches to Ichimoku. So next time uh, when uh, we talk about uh, Ichimoku, we will mention how to trade breakouts of Kumo or the cloud. At this point, we've been showing you how you can actually trade with the trend, with the trend, okay? So don't forget to, if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask us. If you don't have any questions, okay, we can assume that the webinar is over, okay? so. Just ask us if anything is not clear, guys. Please don't hesitate to make any questions. Okay? Uh, so, in this time, I don't see any questions. So, okay, we can assume that everything is clear. Uh, ah, uh, Bradley is asking, where can we find the Chimoku monitor? Bradley, if you don't know where, of course, send an email to me. It's always the same, Tarantula FX at gmail.com. So I will be glad to send you the indicator so 
this is what I can share because it was free to use. Okay. Uh, Daniel is asking, is the webinar registered? I don't know, Daniel, what what you mean by registered? If it, if you think if you ask, is it recorded? Yes, it's being recorded at this point, and it will be uploaded. Sorry about it. Yeah, recorded indeed. It, it is recorded. It is being recorded, and it will be uploaded. So, guys, this is how you can approach this simple strategy. And as you can see, by combining Ichimoku and Heikenashi, this has some potential. Just send me an email, guys, and I will send you a template with indicators. Okay? Send me an email, and you will have the indicators and the strategy itself. Okay? And I, as I say, if anything is not clear, don't hesitate to ask me. Okay, guys, so this is it. We wish you a very good week. Uh, have a great weekend. And, of course, we will see you soon on Live Trading Labs, our mutual webinars, and session recap next week. Thank you, guys, and as always, cheers and trade safe.